According to Chinese custom, it's not unusual for families to name their houses. Yin Yu Tong, or Hall of Plentiful Shelter, was the home of a merchant family in southwestern China, providing shelter for many generations of the Huang family for more than 200 years. Today, the house serves a very different purpose as a historical artifact that is educating museum goers about Chinese history and culture, more than 7,000 miles from the site where the home was first built. This is a house built by a merchant family, um, which had a lot of resources. You think about how many dialects the Chinese people speak. You get a sense also the diversity and richness of vernacular architecture and art and culture in China. And I think that immediately you can pin down you know, the family members and, and how were they living, how were they traveling, and things they have used and touched and they have made. And I think that it really gives the average American visitors a sense of how people were living. Yin Yu Tang was built uh, around the year of uh, 1800 in a place called uh, Huang Village. It's a remote and small village uh, in a place called Huizhou, which is located in the mid-south part of China, about 200 miles from Shanghai. The Yin Yu Tang project helped to raise uh, awareness for historic preservation in that area. Yin actually means sheltering, and Yu means abundance. As the name of the house signifies, uh, it's a place that provides abundance and sheltering to the family. In fact, about eight generations of the Huang family lived here. When you enter uh, Yin Yu Tang, the first room you will encounter is this reception hall here. Um, very important feature of the culture there is uh, respect for the seniors. This reception hall here is actually a place where people can pay homage to their ancestors. It's a very communal area for the family members. Um, at some point, this house contained over 20 people under the same roof here. One of the distinct culture of the Huizhou area is it's known for producing great merchants. Teenager boys, they would be sent away to be apprentices in shops such as pawn shops or be engaged in salt uh, business. So they will be sent away to bigger cities to pursue business opportunities. Uh, so in a way that um, this house were, was occupied primarily by women, wives, and young children. And men would come back maybe once half a year, or in better cases, maybe once every few years, and some of them never returned. <laughs> so you can imagine that um, 
women would be in charge of housework here. They would uh, be taking care of uh, young children as well as seniors. We date this room to 1927 when a young couple was married and this was their sweet uh, wedding room. And you will see a variety of features that convey the meaning of fertility. And a curious feature in the bed is a circular jar which could be filled in hot water and then you can hug it and it will keep you warm all night and also of course we have uh, features such as this bamboo little cradle for a small kid right now i'm standing in front of uh, one of the most beautiful elements in this gorgeous house uh, it's a carved wooden window panel with uh, five pieces. And each of this piece uh, is made of carved uh, camphor wood. So you see dragons, you see uh, linger fungus, which conveys the meaning of immortality and longevity, as well as good wishes. Of course, it serves as a aesthetic or decorative element of the house, but also it allows air circulation. The house was um, dismantled and created and shipped here uh, in the year 1997. And then it was um, placed in a warehouse. So it allowed us actually to study and document as well as trying to put all the pieces together to, to see whether uh, each piece fits. Uh, and the process of documentation, the process of preservation took us about three years. And then in 2003, the house was uh, re-erected here in the museum in Salem and open to the public. The process was very ambitious and complex and it required the collaboration of a team of experts from China as well as from the United States. I think the Chinese government are paying more attention to uh, buildings like this and also the local government has been investing uh, very heavily uh, in historical preservation and in fact recently uh, over 6,000 historical houses like this has been registered as um, cultural heritage sites. The house uh, is amazing time capture is because it contains amazing a range of objects that can tell stories about the changing time in China and also sort of the, the fortune, the rising and falling fortune of the family. We're very, very fortunate to have this great opportunity to present Chinese vernacular architecture and culture and also use this as a platform for U.S.-China cultural exchange. For example, musicians like Yo Yo Ma has performed here and uh, the Huang family members had visited here several times. So there are great connections and it's truly an amazing international collaborative effort. That's it for this week. Join the conversation with us on social media. We are CCTV America on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. 
All of tonight's interviews can be found online at cctv-america.com. And let us know what you'd like us to take full frame next. Email us at fullframe at cctv-america.com. Until then, I'm Mike Walter in Los Angeles. We'll see you next time.